Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to the channel. Today is a support video for those of you that bought a 3D printed Carbon Star 150 back cap for me. I wanted to make sure that you guys had some support when you're trying to install it. And I'm gonna show you how to install it because I admit it's, it's a little quirky, you know, but first a little bit about, about this part. This part is made of flexible filament. The factory cap is made out of hard plastic. Uh, the problem with this is in cold weather, when the metal shrinks, this thing just kind of falls out. And there's a number of reasons for that, and it's because of the way it's made. This is made out of hard plastic, and how it holds the holds it itself in place, I should say, um, is creating tension on the primary mirror, the inside of the primary mirror holder, right? And you'll see Apertura put these relief cuts in here and knobs. And what it does is it creates tensions on the side to hold it in place. Now, under regular conditions, this cap is just fine. Unfortunately, in cold weather, I live in the PNW, so it gets cold quite a bit here. Anything under 39 degrees, this back cap just ends up falling out because the metal shrinks so much, right? And I recreated it so that it would shrink and also expand with the temperature. And I made that part out of TPU. It's a type of flexible filament. Uh, I have some over here, so let me grab it. So here's a spool of TPU, and this is what it looks like. Uh, before it's made into anything. And it's just a, looks like a little wire that's super flexible. This TPU is 95A in hardness, but it's actually a lot harder because this TPU is a high-speed TPU because I have a high-speed printer. I'm able to print parts out that would usually take all day in a matter of hours. But, um... Because of that, it's a lot stiffer. So for those of you that have downloaded or thinking about downloading my part off of Thingiverse, just know that I used a little bit harder material to make that to happen. And if you're looking at my infill settings, that's why I put 15 to 20% because this gets really stiff <laughs> really fast. And the cool thing is I don't have to use as much material as say regular TPU to get it super stiff. Anyways, my part maintains flexibility. It shrinks and it also expands. And also because this is exactly the same diameter as the stock cap, I have more contact around the primary mirror so it holds it in place a lot longer. Also, when it gets too cold, uh, this top and bottom piece that sandwiches the primary mirror holder in place, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can. There it is. Ensures that when the primary mirror holder shrinks to a point where this is no longer contacting, the sides are no longer contacting, this actually holds it in place very firmly. And that's kind of how this back cap works. I also have a nice feature where there's a hole in it, so you can kind of check your collimation with the secondary mirror from the back of your scope, which I think is really handy. And it just replaces it like this. Now, for those of you that ordered from me, and I printed for you, and actually I was really surprised on how many people ordered one from me. Um, I didn't realize that 3D printers are still kind of scarce, and for good reason, because it's not really easy to print a part and produce it very well. It takes a lot of time and practice, and that's kind of why it's a hobby, right? Because you're always messing with your, with your machine, but it's funny because I released my video Saturday morning, and then by the afternoon, I had a whole bunch of DMs and Instagram, and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I got to print all these things, and these things take about four hours to print. And I actually ran out of filament. 
and uh, I had to wait for that. So I'm still in the process of filling some of those orders. And I've already reached out to a lot of you guys, but I really want you guys to have this, especially for those of you that are having issues with the Carbon Star. You know, I don't think that um, you have to put like a shower cap on it or, you know, tape it to the back, especially after you spent like a thousand dollars on a scope. This is a pretty nice part. Um, that kind of solves that issue. Anyways, um, my first part I produced was for Jose, right? And you can thank Jose for this. Uh, I, I printed it, and as I was texting Jose, I was like, dude, you are sending a part out that you would print for yourself. I know, right? I, I don't care what my parts look like actually and um <laughs> so it had some scratches on it and then this inside of it kind of i don't know it doesn't look great right the underside turned out okay but you know it just it just doesn't didn't look great so what i ended up doing was upping the production quality on the product if you purchase it for me. So I also want to talk about um, the expectations of what you'll receive if you do end up opting for me to print this for you. But first on the printing process, so 3D printing, despite what people think is not perfect, it's almost there. It's maybe about 95% there to where it'll produce a perfect part. But if you've ever watched 3D printing, it builds parts in layers. And in that act of building things in layers, you're never going to get a perfect part because it'll print things with what's called layer lines on there. And it's not really an issue when you do hard plastic type of um, parts. It's like this is kind of a really cool dovetail that I made out of rainbow material. This actually holds my ASI, R, ASI Air <laughs> underneath my Skywatcher tripod, which is really cool. Um, I'm able to produce pieces like this. This is a counterweight bar extension for my Skywatcher GTI, uh, which came out really nice, but you can still see the layer lines on that, even though it's white. And this counterweight bar is really cool because I was able to print threads on it. So it just kind of threaded into the counterweight bar there. I mean, really cool, right? Also, I can make cool things like this. This is a counterweight also for the GTI. I thought I needed a little bit more counterweight. This is hard plastic as well. Uh, came out really well. And if you're hearing that rattling inside, this top comes off and I've put um, fishing weights in here as weight. So it's a two part thing uh, that I'm just loading up because I only needed um, just a little bit of weight. But it's you can make really, really cool things. 3D printing, but as you see, it's not perfectly smooth because of the way 3D printers build things. And TPU, because it's flexible, is a little bit more difficult to work with, actually. And the way it prints out, even though it actually prints out pretty good, and when the nozzle touches it as it's printing out, you know, it, it'll make these lines. Here's a finished cap, right? This, this looks a lot better. <laughs> than what I was about to send out, right? So thanks, Jose, for... I know you, you think you didn't do anything, but it just as I was texting you and I was looking, I was like, dude, I cannot send that out. So what I ended up doing, all I did was I ended up flipping the part around because I would print it upside down. I just printed it right side up so that you would get a shiny finish here. And then the bottom side is, it's actually a mat, which is perfect for us in astrophotography, right? Uh, we don't want uh, reflections <laughs> coming in, even though there's no way reflections could actually happen from back there. 
Um, this is a lot better because it kind of mitigates all that too. But here's the piece that if you order from me is what it will look like. Super flexible too, which is really cool. It's a nice thick part too. So you're getting really good quality here. And you get two center caps from me as well. So you get one that just, this one still has a little bit of webbing on here. I don't know if you've seen a 3D print guys, but when it's printing, uh, it kind of strings a little bit and some stringing is normal, but if it, you know, it looks like Charlotte's web and stuff, something's wrong, but um, I got to remove some of this off this one, but it just pops in there and you'll get two caps, right? One fits in really snug and the other one just fits in there. So I wanted to include two caps just in case one was too tight or the other one was too loose. You have two options for that, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so here's the quality of the piece. I don't know if you can see that. So you'll see the layer lines that has printed. I think it actually looks pretty cool. It's kind of a plaid kind of thing. Um, also, as it prints too, I have to print these with what's called supports. And supports look like this. And they just get ripped off <laughs> after the um, printing process is complete. It's so that I can make these two ledges on this part, right? Which is really important because that's what holds it in place. But after I pull the supports off, I have to do a little bit of cleanup, right? So I use, oh no, where's my thing? I use a, I use a little wire cutter here because they're small. And I just trim the residual off here on each of these, right? Uh, and I also have to cut a little bit of the support away that's was there in the first place to help form the part. I got to work a little bit more on this one, but but you'll see that after the supports have been removed, you'll see that on the underside is a little rough, but it's nothing to be concerned about. I just wanted to make sure if you guys have never seen a 3D part before, this is kind of the quality that actually prints out. Also, one thing about producing parts in TPU every so often, the printer, because of the way it prints, um, will leave like teeny, teeny, tiny marks on the edge. And it's very normal for it to do that. So I just wanted to manage your expectations of the part you will receive. I think uh, this part is about 95% perfect, especially from my consumer machine. I use a Creality K1. And now since you know my story, let's install it on the scope. All right, here's our Carbon Star here. And first thing you wanna do with your part is you remove the center part. And if you look at the back, you'll notice that there are two grooves available. Uh, one is a smaller groove. That one goes on the top. And then there's a groove that's longer on the bottom. That is the bottom part. How to put this in is you want to put the bottom in first. And it has to be seated correctly. All of the primary mirror holder has to be in this groove. So I'm going to put that in right now. And whatever you do, um, because you're putting pressure on your scope when you're installing this, make sure you either are aware of how much force you're putting down on your carbon star because you don't want this to tip up, okay? Um, I've made that mistake and trust me, you don't want to relive the experience that I had. So be careful when you're putting it in. Be mindful of how much force you're putting in there.
All right, so this is what it looks like. The entire bottom part is in there flush. Sorry, this one is, mine's a little bit webby still. This one I printed out for myself. <laughs> and you'll see this top part right here. So it's off to the side, right? So the next thing you want to do is bend this so that it just starts feeding into the groove here. So I'm going to do that real quick. So I'm going to bend this in from the top. I'm going to start feeding, working in like that. So it's bent in and the groove started feeding in here. Uh, this bottom is still in, as you see. Now you only have this little part of it to feed in, right? If it looks like this, you're 90% there. And then all you're going to do is keep bending it, feeding it the way that into the groove, like you have been doing. Don't be afraid to put a little force behind it. And as you see now, all of the groove is hidden inside the scope. And then all you do is pop it in the rest of the way, just like that. and it is installed, okay? I just wanted to make sure you guys had a reference on how to install this. It takes a few minutes to do. It's, it's a little quirky, I know, but the thing is, is it'll never come out after this. this. This thing doesn't have to come out. And it's in there pretty solid too, which is really awesome. But um, the last thing you need to do is just put that center cap in there and you're all done. All right, guys, for those of you that have ordered this part, it is coming your way this week. I hope you guys enjoy your new back cap part. And uh, thank you for supporting the channel in that way as well. So I guess I'll see you guys in the next. Peace. <laughs>